Hey everybody, this is Eric with The Drumatic. Thanks for stopping by and tuning in for another episode of The Backbeat. I have my friend Brian Gribben with me today. Um, he's got a very cool channel, a newer channel, a growing channel. Got some cool covers and some other cool content on there. Brian, thanks for joining me today, man. Thanks for having me on, Eric. It's good to now finally be an interviewee on the other side now because I've been so used to giving the interviews. So this ought to be interesting. Yeah, tell me, just since you brought that up, tell me a little bit about um, your interview segment, what it's called, how it came to be. <laughs> uh, well, the name itself, uh, it's kind of a little hard to explain, though, because I don't want to say it came from a political statement. But uh, I really like the fact that I wanted to say that all music mattered to everybody, because there's obviously a sense that it brings people together, regardless of the genre, because you hear the music at the club, you'll go down to maybe that metal festival that happens downtown and you find a bunch of people there, obviously some drunks and stuff like that, but even still people are there to listen to the music and it brings you together. There's also a sense that the music acts as like a gateway kind of drug. It kind of relaxes the brain, at least for me, at least in at times when I really want to get to, into the aggression kind of music, it kind of takes the stress away after a stressful day at work. So, uh, so when the name came up, it really just happened one day and, all music matters was what I wanted it to be. But then I threw and that at the end because I'm out of the Pittsburgh area. So it's part of our dialect. So we say stuff like whoosher and pop and stuff like that. And we also throw in that because at pirate games that we go to, whenever they're trying to get the crowd all pumped up, they'll say charge and that at the end. So <laughs> I love so it. It's always, it's always interesting to have. And I just decided to throw it on there one day and the name just stuck because I jumped around with a couple other names, but this one, I just wanted to stick with all music matters and that because it, it was really a good name. And I really wanted to eventually spread it out, but I wanted to start first with drummers and I had you on my podcast and you yeah. were actually my third interviewee and we actually talked a good bit there. So we can get more into that a little bit later, but at first, I just wanted to just get to know drummers at first and then eventually spread it out. But I did get a guitar player on, so I at least got somebody outside of the drumming circle. Gotcha. Yeah, it's cool. And it was an honor to be to be asked to be on your on your uh, show. Um, we had it. We did. We had a good talk. And as you know, I'm a talker, so I'm going to try to not talk as much today since this is not me being interviewed um, and let you let you talk. But that's but that's super cool that you're doing that. And it's cool because it puts other people on you know, that you've interviewed on people's radars. And, um, and I think that's really a really neat thing. It's kind of a way to even as a because you're a relatively new channel, right, Brian? Uh, my channel's been up for at least a little over a year. But uh, originally, I had started just doing drum covers. But I was already good because I already had a job and everything. I was good financially. So just doing YouTube was more of a hobby to try to get on the side. But yeah. I have been meaning to start a podcast for a while. But I was being lazy at times, and I didn't start till literally this year. So, uh, gotcha. But it was that, and now I decided to incorporate the podcast along with drum covers. And I've seen other people throw in like live streams and stuff. I know that's what uh, Chris Bates and uh, Ash Wells do. So mm. I'm trying to figure out what I could do a little differently. So that's probably a project in the making right now. So I won't spoil what I'm going to do with that just yet. Gotcha. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we'll um, we'll do another interview and it'll be like the exclusive <laughs> exclusive scoop on what what Brian has going on going on yeah. in, in his studio. That's awesome, dude. Well, so you started as a drum as just like doing drum covers, like you said, and then kind of got into the podcast thing. Tell me a little bit about your background with drumming. What got you into that? How old were you? All that good stuff. Well, let's see. Drumming was about. It was actually a little over a decade ago when I actually first started. And uh, I was originally a strings player and I got to keep track of all the stories I tell because my stories kind of change a little bit here and there with each interview I've done. I started off as a strings guy. I played cello throughout my childhood, throughout high school, but I didn't take it with me to college. They didn't have a strings group there. So that was kind of a bummer. And the one school that actually had everything I needed was literally three hours away. So, and we wanted to stay close to home. But getting back on the topic, uh, surprisingly, mine's a little bit of an interesting story because it started first, and I actually made a YouTube video about it. It's It was called the video game Rock Band, I guess. Have you ever played okay. it before? I've never played it, but I am familiar with it. 
Yeah, that, that was where it started. And at first I was just doing the guitar and the bass and stuff, but I jumped on drums and started off easy and eventually worked my way up to expert doing a lot of the cool songs. I wouldn't say I was able to like ace all the songs, but I was at least able to have fun doing it. But I played it so much and my parents realized that it wasn't a fad anymore. So they decided like, if this is going to be legit, we can get you not an acoustic set because they didn't want an acoustic set because of how bad <laughs> the sound could travel through in this house, as I've said to, in my some of my interviews. But they were able to find a electronic kit. And it started off as just kind of a simple one. I forget what it was, but it was a Roland. And I forget which which one brand of Roland it was. But we eventually worked my way up to my current set, which is the Roland TD25K. And just playing it ever since. And you don't have to worry about missing any of those notes on Rock Band anymore. So it's at least sort of like playing Rock Band, but it's at least something you can like play to and you're just listening to the headphones and just try to match it as best you can. Yeah, and you get a little creative, more creative freedom with that too, because you're not locked into trying to make a high score, <laughs> right? As the, yeah, as the yeah, little colors yeah. come up. Yeah. <laughs> I used to play Guitar Hero. That was kind of the closest I ever got to to rock band, and um, very different than real guitar. I felt like I'm like pressing buttons up here, you know, and um, I never never learned to play the guitar. But at any rate, well, that's yeah. cool, man, and. Um, and so about 10, so we play about playing about 10 years now. Something like that. I, I kind of lost count. I lost track of which, how many years it's been, but it's, it felt like it's been over a decade at least. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I'm a numbers guy. So I keep, I'm kind of anal retentive about, <laughs> about times and dates and things like that. Well, that's awesome. And so um, tell us, tell us a little bit about your, your channel. What's, what are the plans for your channel in terms of the drums and the interview segment? Well, after incorporating everything and now trying to release like three videos a week, that's kind of the whole thing I'm doing right now. Right now, I've launched what's called my Teenage Rebellion Project. That's a group, group I'm now doing is uh, Silverstein, and their album was When Broken is Easily Fixed. And that was a album back in my teenage days. And I remember listening to it a good bit. A friend of mine had actually introduced me to it, and I got kind of hooked on Silverstein and their subsequent album, Discovering the Waterfront. But I also wanted to do Story of the Year and their album, Page Avenue. And that one was more to bring back nostalgia. And uh, I credit Throwback Drummer for mentioning uh, nostalgia because that's kind of what he does with his covers too. Yeah. So that's what the drum covers are going to do. I did say about live streaming, which is something I did want to kind of bring up eventually, but that might be something we're saving till May. And... I would say Bruce Baxter actually gave me an idea, but I'm not going to spoil it just yet. I think I'm going to surprise everybody with that. <laughs> All that these might be teases. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I also like to mess with my audience. It's good humor, too. So. That's right. But, yeah, yeah. But also with the podcast episode, last week I kind of released two of them, one on Monday, one on Friday. But I was thinking of doing like music Mondays, which might be the drum covers, and then Wednesdays would be a live stream, and then Friday might be a podcast episode. I'm not gotcha. sure, but right now I'm just trying to make sure I get all the videos because I got a good amount of interviews done so far. So I just want to yeah, make sure I get my ducks in a row before I commit to a full on schedule. Sure. No, absolutely. I did. I haven't gotten to get over and watch it yet. But at the time of us recording this, um, you had interviewed uh, Dustin Fellner. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now that guy's got an amazing studio. Yeah. Did you see all the all the drums he has in the background <laughs> he, there? He's got a couple. <laughs> yeah. couple oh, dozen. Couple. oh yeah <laughs> no he's a great saying, guy actually i was debating where the because sometimes in the videos i'll show just the interviewee like just talking there and just and then probably see like what his background looks like i probably should have done but he was giving me a bunch of short answers really it wasn't like they were long and winded kind of like how yours were but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh so that's why I kind of didn't do it. I just wanted to stick with just me and him, just like the split screen. So that, that's why I did it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I've talked with oh, Dustin yeah, he's before. Really he's a good dude. dude. That's cool. I love did you, it. Inter did you interview him yet? Or are you Not yet, but I do. But he is, we do have it on the schedule. <laughs> when, hmm. I can't remember when it when it is, but um, we do have it on the schedule. And he, he was a nice guy because he had me on his show, the, um, the Harry Mann show um it it was last summer i think 
um and i was like man dude because he had um i'm gonna say i'm gonna get the drummer's name wrong but he had like tosh peterson on there who was playing for machine gun kelly and and me i was like that's crazy dude. <laughs> you know thanks so much you know but uh but yeah so i'm looking forward to chatting with him uh some more too he's a good he's a good dude so i can't wait to watch your interview by the time people see our interview i will have already watched it and commented on it but yeah, um, absolutely. awesome so 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 you started off strings played drums got the youtube channel from what are your goals with your youtube channel brian well i would say to be selfish it would be nice to get to the 1k mark too kind of yeah. where ash and eventually where drum man 190 is but i think now i realize it was good to build a sense of community too and I think after doing these last couple of interviews and even the one with you, it was good to also get to know other drummers. I learned that I was kind of introverted in a way. So I wanted to also get out and kind of break that sort of barrier in order to talk with people like you and then other drummers who share similar hobbies or even took it a little step further, have either a podcast or in your case, a drum making company. So it was good too. I was able to connect with other drummers and I've now considered that my friends too. And it's been good to get involved in our community. And I see my channel grow it's still, still a little bit slow, but we we're getting there. And actually I was pretty happy. I finally broke 70 subscribers last night. So nice. Congratulations. We're almost no, the, three quarters of the way there. Yeah. So, well, celebrate those milestones. That's, you know, Loretta and I have done that too. Um, like in the fact, I'm honestly, like still every, every time somebody comments on a video, I can't believe that anybody cares you know, at all. Right. So it's, it's always exciting and we've enjoyed the journey from, you know, starting out to, you know, you hit a hundred and, and it's, it's, it's exciting. I think you're right. It's so much about building community. And I think when we got into it, we didn't realize that that's what it would be. Um, but by far, that's our favorite part of it too. And like you said, we've made a lot of friends, you know, through this, this whole thing and getting to talk to wonderful people like yourself and, um, yeah, it's a real cool, it's a real cool thing. And um, so in terms of, in terms of growing the channel, what do you, what have you found that seems to be like, what tools are you using to help grow? Like, is it, you know, like specific release times and days, or um, are you, you find yourself engaging with others or how, what is working for you? Uh, it seems to be a little bit of everything, kind of all the stuff that you had mentioned, but uh. I post videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. And I think, I think that's how it's going to be. I think that's what my social media posts are going to be on those days. And then Tuesday and Thursday are just going to be sort of just posts kind of giving you an update on like where I'm standing or maybe just throw something funny out there. I know I threw a riddle out one day and it was meant to be, it was deliberately meant to be easy because it was about drums and that. So, uh, uh, I know I use stuff like uh, TubeBuddy. I don't know if you know what that is. I do, yeah. Well, for, for the audience, it's kind of just one of those tools that like help you pick out like tags or what you could do to make your title stand out from the competition. So it's stuff like that. And it's stuff that I hope would be helpful in a way. I think, it, I think it's been more of the interaction because hmm. posting on the social media channels and stuff like that and then also posting in the groups because I know Drumman 190 has drummers to watch and then Ash Wells with the two drums collaboration and some of the other ones too. Yeah. I think that one's been the big help of finding other drummers. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much out there to keep, you know, to like so many tools out there to connect with other drummers that some of the guys that you've mentioned, you know, like Matthew Drumman and, and Ash Wells have, have kind of put out there. And so it's like, Oh, cool. So now, you know, everybody has this platform and um once in a while and i don't do it often enough but like you could just go through and find new people to engage with and subscribe to and create start creating relationships with that's exciting i would say it's been a little easier on facebook because uh i think after you select so many drummers as like add as friends they'll start giving you a whole bunch more to just choose from there yeah so i kind of find that i kind of found that a little bit easier so i think i think definitely also doing it on youtube but I think it also depends on like what kind of keywords you're using. So yeah, I think that's something to consider going forward. Yeah. Try to find those ones that, you know, draw the, draw your audience 
to, to that video if you're not because the you you mentioned something in a post um about the algorithms and and like i don't know that there's a way to really crack those you know what i mean it's just kind of you try different things and sometimes it sticks and you know and sometimes it it's a miss and or at least that's what i've found have you found the same kind of thing it's been at times i find the algorithm kind of odd because of but I think it also depends on if you're doing a video that nobody else has done yet. Cause that's how it was with one of my drum covers, uh, unfit earth, which has been my most watched one and most liked so far. So I think nobody else has done a drum cover on it yet. So yeah. I actually was, I was actually pretty happy about that. And I should have celebrated that one year anniversary because I released that, I think it was a little over a year ago and I've seen it grow and I was pretty shocked to see a good number of people actually liked it. I was like, well, I guess you must have liked it then. Nice. <laughs> That's a good feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Do you ever get sad like me? I've had to get over it. But like when you see somebody clicks the thumbs down, does that is do you like, does that affect I think changed, you? I think they changed it because now it doesn't show like how many dislikes you get in a video. Right. They did change it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like if it's just dislike, but. It now just seems like it gives you a percentage based on how many, uh, if you're looking at it in the YouTube studio or when you look under content to see like how you're doing. Yeah. I think it will say like how many likes you have and then it'll just give you a percentage. And then if there's a little gray mark at the end, it tells you how many, oh, maybe not the exact number, but you know, you got some dislikes on the video. Yeah. If you've got your percent like percentage is 93%, <laughs> you're like, yeah. wait a minute. And uh, I think, I think creator, or at least for me as, as a, as a creative type of person, like I can be real sensitive, but like you kind of almost have to learn to just be like, just, you do it because you love it. Not because so many people don't like it or like it. Right. Yeah. Um, have you found kind of having to create a different headspace for like, for that like versus dislike thing or. I just delete the comments really. Uh, I just ignore it too. I don't exactly know what it is that people would necessarily want. I mean, it's just us trying to, you know, that's the thing. Just going out there, having a fun time and trying to be as close as I can. But, you know, like in live concerts, I mean, those drummers are also speeding up on songs that like I play. So it's not like going to be perfect tune. It's going to be a little quicker. It's going to be maybe not exactly like how they play it on the album. So, I mean, like what exactly yeah. do you not like about it really? Yeah. And what's, it, it's, that's a good, a good thing to bring up. What is your um, school of thought on when you do covers? Cause like, I know there's some people that are like, no, true to the, the way the drummer played it in the track on the, in the studio. And, and like me, I like to, to kind of use that as a framework and then just kind of give it my own little thing. You know, what about you? Uh, well, you mean more so like, trying to make play note for note or try to improvise and play your own thing. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've had like a couple of talks with this in my interviews too, about like how some drummers do it. And I have to admit now it's starting to get to me because when I used to do it, I tried to get as close as I could to it, at least play it note for note. And that's yeah. how it'd been for a good while. And even through some of my recent covers, I was trying to play it as note for note as best as I could. But now, I think I might add in, in like certain parts, maybe where there's supposed to be like a drum fill, or I feel like there has to be a drum fill there. I think I'll do it there and stuff like that. So I think now I'm going to start branching off unless it's like one of the more obvious kind of notes where it's just like hi-hat, snare, kick and stuff like that. Gotcha. So excellent. it's, it's going to be something like that. So I think now I'm going to start getting a little creative. Cool. Cool. Let me jump back to your, uh, to your podcast. Um, who's the dream interviewee i'm actually stealing this question <laughs> that i heard in another interview today i was like i'm gonna ask brian that today uh so so thank you drummer ski and <laughs> drum me on 90 for your interview <laughs> i was like i'm gonna ask brian this question today but who's your well, actually, dream uh, interviewee actually uh dustin uh, failure actually asked me that question too so oh did he yeah he did um uh, i did say uh george corleus would be a good one he's a heavy metal drummer and he's played in bands like uh nile and then he does his own solo side project and uh Cool. But he also is a drum teacher too, so he experiments with all sorts of music. But he's primarily known for his death metal style because he's he's pretty inhuman. Come to his fast play style. <laughs> nice. uh, but I also had found uh, Sammy Hagar's channel too, and I had recently subscribed. And I was debating whether to reach out to him because I saw 
he had did a video with uh, Guy Ferrari, and uh, they had gone out to Arizona to see uh, Man- Maynard James Keenan because uh, Maynard has his own little uh, winery out there. So I thought, oh, that's really cool. He's going to interact with other musicians, and these guys got their own little side hobbies as well as top shelf. I don't know what guys' music tastes are, but I guess he really likes more of the old school stuff. I could be wrong, but that's just what I feel like too. So it would seem like some of the stars, maybe like Sammy Hagar or uh, George Coleus. Uh, to name any other ones, good question, boy. That's a pretty long list too. Sure. Actually, you know what? You know which one I really did get, and it's kind of a shame that he had recently passed. It was actually two: Neil Peart and Eddie Van Halen would have been nice. Oh so, yeah, yeah, and absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Not much you can do there. I mean, it, it is what it is, and it was unfortunate too. But those two were big, influential people. So, uh, for those at least still living, uh, I don't know. Boy, I feel like if I just find a person, I'll just really ask them to come on. Really, no matter if they're big or famous or whether they're yeah. just kind of like where you are too. You got at least a good amount of subscribers, but you're still technically small in that uh, category. Yeah. I, we wouldn't use the word famous over here <laughs> at all. <laughs> no. We at least got a presence, but we're not yeah. those uh, big shots out there who's making all the dough in that. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> Cool. So let's let's jump from drums here for a minute. And um, uh, aside from drums and and your podcast, what else do you like to do when you have free time? Uh, well, on some days I don't really have free time because I I actually work uh, two jobs. So I have my main job that's like the eight to five. So that's uh that's obviously Monday Friday. But I my second job I work. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. That's a job in the restaurant industry. It's a friend of the family's too. I go there and I, it's mainly kitchen work too, but I've kind of like a jack of all trades with like portioning, dishwashing, cooking and stuff like that. So my free time's a little bit sparse here and there. So I have to like either make drum covers and like try to practice them as best I can. Yeah. So also need to get to the gym too. So that's the other thing. Me too. We're getting the the winter pot belly back again. So definitely trying to get back to gym and then and every now and again try to get a little drum practice in. So I at least know like how to practice the song. So at least ready to videotape it either on the Sundays because at least Saturdays now I'm getting like a lot of podcast interviews in. Yeah. And Monday and Wednesday, because those are days I'm least free in the evenings. Nice. Nice. Um, are you, uh, are you a movie buff or anything like that? Or, uh, it used to be, I mean, I, I used to, at least when I was a kid, got all the Disney movies and all the animated ones. And, uh, uh, I know there were some movies, but I've recently just stopped watching it. I don't know why I'm just not interested in, in it anymore. I think, uh, I think there's a little sense of dullness now in it. And I think that's now what they're throwing the political term. They're throwing the term woke everywhere now. So, <laughs> right. So unfortunately, and I think I could kind of see it. So I feel like they're kind of right on that because they're not the same. They're not like someone be like, Oh my gosh, I want to watch that movie again. Sort of deal. It's not like that. But uh, why did you ask? Are you going to talk about some movies? Yeah. Oh no. I was just. I just thought I would throw that question out there. Just. <laughs> just curious. Curious. I know it's. It's. And of course, that requires having free time, too. You know what I mean. So. Um, yeah. I was just. I studied film, and so like I'm just curious as to you know because your videos, the way you do your videos too, um, I guess it kind of can lead to, what are you? What equipment are you using to film your videos? Uh, really, it's only one camera, and it's mm. been a GoPro Hero Black Eight for oh nice for pretty much a good while too. My first video I did, which was the both for no guts, no glory, and I thought it was appropriate to be the first video. Uh, that one was on my phone, and that was with an iRig two, and I put it I put it up there, and unfortunately, it only had the screen like this big. It wasn't like full screen or anything oh. like that, so. 
And I don't think turning it sideways alleviated the problem either. So it was, it was kind of a downer, but I didn't want to say I, I've had trouble with that song and I've had moments where my sticks were flying out. I like the video I got right there. So I'm not doing that again. I might actually do a remake <laughs> at some point. Yeah. I've thought about that too. Like the first, you know, the first drum cover. Uh, but then I just haven't, <laughs> I've not, I've been like, I don't know. <laughs> I talked myself out of it. I think definitely doing a remake at some point, but then I would make it for like, it's funny you mentioned movies too, because I like throwing in little movie elements into my uh, drum covers too, to kind of make it diversifiable if we want to throw that term out there. Cause that's how it was with uh, one of my drum covers from we are the end. It was the count backwards from 10. Okay. So that's kind of what I did at the beginning there just to kind of, kind of make it a little bit more spruced up or yeah, make it interesting. I should say. Cool. And what are you editing with? Uh, it's just uh, Final Cut Pro, and after I get everything from my GoPro onto here, I just import it in. I just pull out the parts where maybe I'm trying to like sit down after I hit the record button on it, and then just get to the point. I match it up. At least, at least I get it precisely where it needs to be. At least till I start hitting the symbols, so then it matches with either the audio I made in my Logic Cut Pro with MIDI, or or just with the, or if it's just like one of those like standard videos where you're just filming outside, it's already there for you too. You just want to edit out some of the parts. Gotcha. Cool. 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 So what are your, um, any, any, um, let's see here. How do I want to ask this question? <laughs> um, any other than the stuff, other than the stuff that you've teased us about, but won't share with us yet. What, um, are there any, any things coming up, um, on your channel that you can tell us about? Uh, let's see. Outside of the podcast episodes, I know uh, I've had a couple guys, and I was privileged to actually speak with some guys internationally too. Some guys from the UK. I got one from Germany coming up, and one from Greece actually. So that was that was pretty good. And those are in the works right now. Uh, I would say still making the. I gotta get back on the jump covers too, because there is a jump collaboration I'm doing with a fellow from Greece. Uh, Demetis Kikis, I believe is how you pronounce the name. I, I think I've always said it wrong too, but uh, he's he really loves Dream Feeder, and the song I really like is called The Root of All Evil. It's just it's a pretty long song too, but it's not overtly difficult per se. Okay, so we're gonna have a little fun there. So I will nice. spoil that much. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, collaboration. I don't know when I'm gonna start doing live streams, I just uh. I know uh, actually Ash as good of as his heart too. Uh, he actually gave me a, uh, he uses OBS. So he gave me the link to that. So I was pretty happy. And I think I'm, I'm going to see like how to like spread that out. Cause I think there's, uh, I think it's called an app uh, restream where you're able to like send it to various social media apps all at once when you're doing a video, probably something like this. And then okay. that way people on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they can, they can then see the video happening all at once. So. Nice. Stuff like that. And then the jump covers with the Teenage Rebellion project I'm doing. It's uh, Silverstein. I'm going to try to finish up that album. And then what I actually did with the, and this is one I did a while back with the Bolt for album. It was uh, the Fourth Crusade. I had actually played most of it. I didn't do all the songs because the very last one I just considered a filler song. It wasn't really very hard at all. Okay. But uh, songs one through 10, uh, songs one through 10, we put that all together in like one big video to kind of show like, Hey, here's the whole album. So I figured have at it and go see what you like. Nice. Very cool. Oh yeah. Ash is a cool dude. He, um, he did the same thing for me actually with the, the two year anniversary live stream that Lorenda and I did was really his idea. It's like, you guys need to do a live stream. I was like, man, dude, that's just one more thing to try to figure out, you know? And so he did, he sent OBS and was very, very helpful. Um, and uh, it's cool when you meet people like that out there that are, that aren't just gonna like hold all their cards to themselves, but are willing to be like, let me help you do this and, you know, and help you figure it out. And um, we wouldn't have been able to do it <laughs> if Ash hadn't helped us. So it's cool that he's, he's helping you out with the live stream thing too. It was fun. It was fun. I think you'll dig it. Um, I don't dig it like I want to do it every week, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but I, I like watching Ash's live segments, but, um, I think we'll save them for like, you know, 
uh, milestones kind of thing. That sort of thing. Or if you want to, because I know his uh, live streams mostly just been him playing drums or just kind of giving an update on what he's what he's doing, either personally with his charity or on his yeah. channel, stuff like that. And great charity that he's supporting, by the way. Yeah, super good. Stepping Stones. Yeah. Did you? You say you guys did that uh, two drums collaboration charity contest. Yeah, I, um, it was Joey Clark and I entered a, entered our Foo Fighters My Hero collaboration that we did uh, for that. Did you enter? A, did you enter one? I did, and it was me and uh, Joshua Drummer doing "In the End" by Lincoln Park. Nice, nice, good deal. Oh yeah, good deal. I love it. I love it. So, um, let me see here. All of your so you've got all of your stuff on the channel. Your um the you know the upcoming interviews um you've gone global that's exciting that, that, that's awesome and um sort of with with all the yeah I with all of the um the stuff that you've got that you've got that you've started and are doing and have coming up taking all that learning what you've learned what advice would you give to somebody like you or I starting starting a YouTube channel slash drumming channel, what would be your biggest piece of advice? I will say you're always going to expect a uphill battle per se, mainly because what I was mentioning with the algorithm and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you're just looking to do drum covers at first, it's best to try to diversify yourself from like what other people are doing. That's what I wanted to do too. I wanted to also kind of like throw movie elements in or maybe do stuff outside and try to mess around with like different camera angles to make it look interesting. So one thing is diversify yourself, but don't just limit it to drum covers too. Try to like maybe find like a live stream idea, something like what we've been talking about here. Or if you're very good at talking, you're very extroverted, or you just want to like interact with like how what we're, what we're doing. Let's say start maybe a talk show or a podcast. You get plenty of those these days. Yeah, and just people just going on there, just yammering away, doing all that too. So, uh, hey, that sounded really... like our interview. I just yammered away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wasn't pointing at you. I wasn't trying to be offensive here. No, 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 like no, 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 no. I just, I'm just being funny. No, I didn't take it personally. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, but don't limit yourself. So diversify yourself. Don't limit yourself to just like one particular niche as i would say so if you're just looking at drum covers like i said it, it's a pretty saturated market because you got a lot of musicians who might do like some of the same songs you want to do like the big ones like learn to fly by food fighters for instance it's best to also find those songs that aren't covered a whole lot that's kind of like what i wanted to do or if you also wanted to do a little bit of nostalgia too kind of like what i'm doing so i would say that and definitely build a presence and this was something I had learned and I should have perhaps looked on it too. When I started joining all these uh, different Facebook groups with uh, Ashes, Two Drums, Drum Ends, Drummers to Watch, that sort of thing. Try to find those groups and try to be as interactive with other drummers as you can. Try to maybe post every now and again on social media. Try to show you still, hey, I still exist. There we go. Yeah. I still exist. I still have a presence. I'm here. Here. I'm right here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Diversify, don't limit yourself, and connect. Absolutely, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Any final thoughts, Brian? Um, I guess, uh, actually, one thing, because I know you and me, we had talked about uh, Transformers, not to get off topic, but you remember when we had talked about Transformers back in our last, yes. uh, last podcast interview? I, I mean to go up in my attic to actually see if I still had them there, but I don't know if I did. But how many of those did you collect, actually? That's oh, okay gosh. if I start asking you questions. Yeah, no, that's totally <laughs> Man, as when I was growing up, geez, I probably had a hundred of those things. Uh, and unfortunately, I sold them all in my 20s. Hmm. Um, made a lot of, made, made about 700 bucks off of them. <laughs> but, um, and so now I do have a couple of the, um, the, like the G, the generation one re-releases that they did a few years ago. So like rock, you know, hot rod, optimus prime, sound wave blaster. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's good. Cause they're like 10 times more expensive now 
than they were in the 80s. So, <laughs> actually, mine was the animated one. I forget. I think it was on the Cartoon Network channel, and uh, yeah, those are the ones. Those are the ones I bought too, and I think I might have sold them as well. I don't know. That was something my parents were doing. So, yeah. just kind of make room for all the Christmas decorations we keep investing in. I love it. I love it. You know. To, to tie that in with the movie question earlier, when the first Transformers movie came out, I saw the trailer for it and I cried. I was so excited. I was so excited to see this on the big screen and the movie was all right. And then, then the rest of them made me cry for different reasons. <laughs> it wasn't excitement or nostalgia. It was like, they have decimated my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, I don't know. I wasn't too crazy about the live action ones. I, I think I might go back and just watch them just to say like, okay, I watched them in. That's yeah. That's, that's all I got to say. Bumblebee was the best one of all of the Transformer movies in my humble opinion. I was like, yes. yep, this is how it should have been from the beginning. <laughs> was that the prequel? Yeah. Okay. It was really good. It was really good. That's that's funny. I'd forgotten that we had talked about Transformers until until you mentioned it again. I was like, oh, that's right. We did. We got, we collect, we collect nostalgic stuff like that gi joe transformers superhero stuff you know we're kind of star wars we're kind of nerdy over here <laughs> oh yeah i say you and me both actually mine used to be the legos which nice i think i mostly more like star wars but i know i like kind of branched out and like some of the other big things i used to have i think nice. i still have actually i was trying to remember if i still had them or not but it's they're all been destroyed they're all in various pieces all in different boxes all uh, up in the attic yeah so <laughs> I, I do remember, in fact a lot of the big ones I used to have and i i should have just put them up somewhere because i remember when you're a kid though you just like playing with them and you also like to try to build some of the alternatives they would have in those building yeah. maps they would have so sometimes you would just uh take them apart and, and then you forget like don't put it back together so it's kind of a bummer yeah, yeah, you got to put them together and then display them and never touch them again. That's the adult way to do Legos. <laughs> yes, but that's what they should say. Say no, we're gonna wait till you're a good teenager where you're not gonna destroy them and leave them on the floor. And it's hard business just trying to walk out of your bedroom without stepping on them. <laughs> and oh my gosh, it's like you might as well have stepped on a landmine. They're so like they're so uh, painful. Well, I guess I've never stepped on a landmine. No. Why would I have? But like. Anyway, but they hurt. That was maybe a bad analogy, but they hurt like yes. the Dickens. So there's that. <laughs> Tap dancing through a minefield. That's what we would say. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's uh, yes. we have we have dogs. We don't have kids. Our kids are all grown, but like sometimes their their bone, like their little chew bones, will are like a lab. Like, do we have Legos in here? That's just like obliterated my foot. You know? <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so before we, before we sign off and I tell people to go to your channel and all that good stuff, what, uh, is there any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share, um, aside from our transformer, our transformers that, uh, that you'd like to leave our viewers with today? I guess, uh, mine's just kind of one last question for you, but how'd you start back beat? And I guess why, if that's okay. Oh yeah, sure. So, um, Early on, after we started the drum attic, I, I, I kind of had the idea of wanting to, to interview people. Um, and then I never pulled the trigger on it because it was, you know, Loretta and I both work full time jobs. And then, you know, and then, um, and then we were doing the drum attic. And then, of course, we, we live down here in North Carolina. We have two pieces of property that, um, that are, is old family property. And my mom lives on one of them and we live on the other. So taking care of that in the summer gets busy. So I just never really pulled the trigger on it. Um, and then I kind of just got inspired watching, you know, um, Chris over at Drummer's Key and Drum Man 190, um, and then even even your interview episodes. I was like, yeah, but then the trick is, is how do you, what do you do that's just a little bit different? You know, how do you, so it's not just the same stuff that you did or that Matthew did or that Chris did. And um, so, yeah, so I was just like, well, let's just see if we can, you know, dig and just get to know people, you know, a little bit more beyond just the drums, likes, dislikes, and personalities and uh things like that so i enjoy, I've, I've enjoyed doing it so far you know it's been uh it's been a neat a neat thing so yeah sorry to get in the red just upstairs oh they're <laughs> yeah your, your house guests <laughs> actually because it's easter weekend so we invited the family in too so 
That's right. That's right. It is Easter weekend. Absolutely. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Anything else, Brian? Uh, no, that's about it. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you off? so much. I'm just going to thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to, to hang out with me for a little bit. No worries. And it's good to actually get out and also now jump on somebody else's podcast for a change. This is, I was kind of a little nervous going into it. I wasn't sure if this was going to be like a job interview or something like that. So uh, <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully it was a lot more laid back than that. <laughs> it was. Yes. This is probably what they should start doing from now on. Yes. So. Instead of Brian, why do you think you would be a good fit for our podcast? <laughs> or like, where do you see yourself in five years? Or right. to be like the family guy version. Don't say doing your wife. Don't say doing your wife. Don't say doing your wife. Doing your son. That's a family guy. That was a nope. family guy question. <laughs> yeah. yep, that one doesn't little, work. Little family guy, family guy reference. All right. Well, dude, thanks again. And you all, thanks for stopping by uh, the dramatic to watch this episode of The Backbeat. This has been Brian Gerben. Again, if you haven't already, please go check out his channel. Subscribe, like, leave some engaging and encouraging comments. He's a really cool guy. He got some really cool content. You'll be glad you subbed. I'll put all his links in the description below. We will see you next time.